Hey everybody, and welcome to another Indestructible Modeler. This is now part four of my Space 1999 Round 2 Eagle build. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and pick up where we left off, and uh, what I'm doing now is getting the switch to be soldered and wired uh, so that we can connect it to our power and light source. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on lighting. I don't intend to make this a huge tutorial about lighting, but um, let me just mention a, a few words about it. Um, because people have asked me about, about lighting, and I do intend to um, uh, create a, uh, a video about lighting in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to let you know that over the last couple years, I've been um, experimenting with lighting and successfully have... Uh, incorporated it into my kits. Nothing too fancy. I can't say I'm the world's uh, foremost expert on lighting, um, but I can tell you that um, even I was intimidated by, um, you know, putting lights into models. Um, you know, you have to calculate resistance, making sure that, uh, you know, you try to do all the right things so that it's going to work properly. Um, and, you know, don't let yourself be intimidated by that. You can now buy pre-wired lights. In fact, the one we're using now I got off of eBay. Um, there's a, a great source uh, called modeltrainsoftware.com, which I'd highly recommend, especially as you get started with lighting. But even as you continue to light your models, they do offer a lot of different options there. So uh, getting back to pre-wired, they come already wired with the resistors uh, connected to your LED. You just have to be sure that whatever resistor you're getting is going to be compatible with the power source that you're using. In this case, we're using a 9-volt battery, so this particular resistor can handle that. And this is just a basic diagram to show you how everything is going to be connected. We have our power source here. Uh, the positive wires or the red wires are going to run directly through to the light. And then the uh, black or negative wires are going to run from the light source, uh, be essentially interrupted here by the switch, or there's going to be a switch in between the connection from the light source to the battery. And that way, as we switch the uh, switch back and forth, we can turn on, on and off our light. So... Uh, Regard to a soldering iron, this is a very basic soldering iron. Don't spend a lot of money on this. And um, as for soldering itself, don't be intimidated by that either. You know, no one's going to be sitting here judging how nicely you solder a connection. You just got to be sure you get a good connection there. And uh, there are lights now you can buy that don't require soldering, uh, but uh, this really isn't that hard to do. So uh, again, don't don't be uh, intimidated by it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and connect this, and then. Um, give you a brief demonstration how it works. Okay, so we have our switch ready to go, and we have our battery and a holder. Uh, the holder I got off of eBay. And uh, there's a variety of ways you can connect a battery. You can use just a simple cap like this with the uh, leads coming out. Uh, just to show you, Model Train software has things like this. Uh, again, already pre-wired. You just have to hook your connections together. Uh, it comes already pre-wired with a switch. This is a push-button switch. And then you can find things like this here that are battery holders with a lid. This is for a double A set of batteries. And um, some even come with a switch. I don't know, yeah, this one actually has a switch already put into place there. So yeah, a lot of different options. Uh, for this project, however, we're going to stick with this one here. Um, there's enough room to accommodate this, and it's a nice way to keep the battery in position. Okay, this is a wire stripper, and you obviously need to get a hold of one of these. And um, so it comes with different sizes for different gauges of wire. And you just make sure you just choose the right one. It doesn't take a lot to strip a wire. Just pull it off like that. All right, so let me just temporarily hook up a light, and then I will uh, show you how this works. All right, so we have everything temporarily wired up here now. And we have our uh, positive connections from the power source to the light hooked up here. And we've got our negatives hooked through the switch, just as I showed you in the diagram. And uh, you can see this is the LED here. It's very similar to the one we're going to be using here in the Eagle cockpit. And this bump here is the resistor, so it's already pre-wired, ready to go. And uh, so all we have to do is just flip the switch now, and we can control the power going to the light. Okay, so that's it for this. Let's go ahead and move on to the passenger pod and um, uh, continue to move forward with the completing this model. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the paneling on the passenger pod. This is the roof, and as you can see, I've laid down some masking tape in these geometric patterns. I'm going to use pastels now to create the panels. Okay, and this is how they look. Um, so this is the obviously the floor, and this is going to go over this like that. So underneath the uh, grill, you can see there's some shading and paneling there. And this is how the uh, roof turned out. Let's go ahead and put that on the passenger pod. So let's see here. It's going to look like that. So. And this is a side panel of the box here showing you the pattern of shading that uh, is seen on the passenger pod and this is what we're going after. So um, this is how it's looking so far. And you can see the pastels are pretty effective in creating that pattern. So I know I've shown this numerous times already. I'll just show you how I'm doing it with this here. And um, so I'm just taking to me a masking tape which is good for this process. Uh, you know you get a pretty good amount of adhesion. Uh, on the model surface and that's what you want because you want pastels creeping underneath the masking tape there. So uh, you just start at one end and applying your darkest uh, amount here right at the edge and then if you want this feathered look you just kind of brush away from that and uh, you'll get this appearance where it's darker on one end and kind of fades off. Um, here I'm just creating one panel so I'm just going to put the darkest application again at the edges I'm brushing away from it. Okay, and so let's go ahead and pull that out. Okay, and then we're left with that panel there. And uh, after this, I'm going to go ahead and apply some matte finish on it. And that's what this stuff is here. And um, that allows us the uh, pastel to stay in place. And uh, then you can go back and apply a little bit more and you'll get this sort of cross-hatched appearance there. Okay, and when you apply the matte coating, um, can't emphasize enough, you just want a light coat. So don't spray too close to your model surface. You don't really need a lot to hold these in place. So I'm proceeding with the command module in pretty much the same fashion, just masking off different panels here. Um, doesn't seem to be any particular pattern when I look at different models, so um, I'm just uh, putting down uh, masking tape where I think would look good. So uh, I've already applied some pastels here. I'm just going to go ahead and peel this away and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is how the command module is looking. I finished the paneling here and the bottom side looks pretty much the same. Uh, I've added the sensor dishes and we're now gluing things together here. So uh, I'm in the process now of gluing this cage around the walkway here. So this uh, has to go on top like so. Uh, after that, then we get to start putting on these here. Um, I already have the back side put together and we're ready to put the other cages on there. So everything is coming together. Uh, we'll keep moving along. All right, so it's really starting to take shape here. You can see the front and rear cage assembled. And um, this is what, by the way, the bottom looks like. So you can see the paneling looks like that. All right, so we're getting closer and closer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish... Uh, uh, attaching the windows here with the landing pod. Um, what I've done here was I masked off the windows just in case um, well actually what I'm trying to do is avoid getting any cement on the windows so uh, hopefully that'll help. Alright so let's go ahead and continue forward. Alright guys well I decided to go ahead and make a customized battery compartment here. This was made with styrene plastic and also use this uh, squared off rod here along the base to add more support. I uh, just measured out the length of the battery, cut it out, and uh, glued it into place with super glue. Now I decided to go this route versus using this. This is what I originally intended to do, was to put the battery in here and glue this down. But um, I found it very difficult to take the battery in and out of here. So considering we're in a confined space, I didn't want um, to slip and then cause some breakage there just by taking the stupid battery out. So. Uh, the battery is going to slide in and out of here pretty easily, like that, and we're just going to connect it uh, to this here, so that's pretty easy to work with. Okay guys, I'm in the process now of applying decals, and I've just 
I've uh, laid down the ones for the command module here. And uh, after I put the decals on, I do apply a dull coat. In this case, again, I'm using this matte coat that I've showed you before. And I actually like this because it's, it's kind of a semi-gloss finish. So um, one method of applying decals in, and a suggested method of applying decals is to apply a gloss coat on your model, then apply the decal, and then apply the final flat coat or whatever it is you're going to coat your models with. Um, this here is kind of, like I said, a semi-gloss finish. And so I decided not to proceed with uh, putting on a gloss coat. I'm just going to go with, with the finish as it is. Um, and then, again, once I'm done with putting the decals on, I apply a little bit more of that coating on. So that's why I have the windows taped here. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm going to go ahead and take this away. And, again, that's, of course, to guard the uh, clear windows against uh, being sprayed with clear coat. Uh, another hint here is to, uh, at least this is what I do anyway, that I just lay down a t-shirt here as I'm applying decals. I'll sometimes I need to dab off excess water, and it's just um, nice to have something you can do that on. And then uh, as I finish each piece, I do um, put it inside a plastic bag here, just like you see, uh, just to protect it. It's just a precaution. You'd hate to get this far only to have something scratch your model, so uh, that's why that's in plastic there. All right, well, it's time to complete the wiring, and so what I've done so far is to uh, drill a hole through this door here. I'm going to drill an adjoining hole right here, and then the wires will feed through and we'll solder them together here. Okay, and you can see the cockpit lights are on, so they're working, and uh, we have now the front and back cages attached. We're using the screws to permanently seal the uh, passenger pod in place. And uh, I still have the masking fluid over the windows just to avoid any accidents here. We'll take that off towards the end. All right, so next are the engines, and then we'll finally uh, work on the uh, pods for the landing gear. Okay, well it's time to test out the springs, so I'm cutting the springs now to the same length as the ones that came with the kit. So these again are a um, smaller uh, wire diameter, and um, so it's going to be a little softer uh, than the ones that came with the kit. So let's just uh, glue them onto the pads here and let's uh, give it a shot. Here now we have the finished pods. You can see I tried adding some weathering there along the jets here, just to include some buildup from the exhaust. Uh, I did that with white pastels. Not sure how long that's going to stay. I tried to dull coat it, but every time I did that, it seemed to fade it away. I know I could probably dry brush it as well. I may do that, but um, not many things left. So I'm going to go ahead and piece the rest of them all together. I will show you the final ship in just a second. Alright guys, well it's time to show you the finished product. And as you know, we started off with a bunch of pieces like this. There's over 300 pieces in that box. And we ended up with something that looks like this. And here we now have the finished Space 1999 Eagle. It's a 22-inch model by Round 2. So I have to say, this is a pretty impressive model. It really uh, results in a nice facsimile of the ship that you see on the TV show. And as you know, for many years, the only model kit that was available of the Eagle was this one here with the exception of other garage kits that you could buy. This, of course, was made by MPC. You can see it's a 12-inch model. It is about half the length of the new Round 2 kit. And obviously, the Round 2 kit is much more accurate as well. So I have to say, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the kit turned out. Uh, a couple extra things that we purchased for the kit include the frames that you see around the windows. Again, that was made by a gentleman named Steve Coates. You can find him at Space 1999 Props and Ships on Facebook, and he's still producing that, uh, that little kit there. By the way, he's decided to um, include uh, four frames rather than just two when it comes to uh, buying one set. So uh, he is now making them so that you get frames for all four windows. The other thing, of course, we bought were the springs. We replaced the ones that came in the kit, 
and I'm happy with the way those turned out as well. The springs that we purchased are a much thinner diameter uh, than the ones in the kit, and I had heard that the only problems with the ones that came included was that they don't bend very much, and so um, you know the model tends to sit up higher. One thing is that this model actually is not very heavy, and uh, even this one we probably could have put a little bit of weight so that we can get more of that spring action. Um, so that is something you might want to consider doing is adding a little bit of weight there. Um, now the springs, let me just show you how those work. I'm actually pretty happy with the way these turned out. So uh, again, as you know, when the eagle sets down on a surface, uh, there's always been this uh, effect that they had where these um, springs come into place there and uh, give us the uh, uh, impression that it's a heavy ship. So as we come down here, you can see that the springs actually do work here. Uh, the only one that's a little stiff is this one here, which, uh, you know, we can apply just a little pressure there and it'll, it'll work for you there too. Uh, I think the reason that happened was the paint I applied here to the rod was probably a little thick, and so it, it's a little sticky there, but uh, nonetheless the spring uh, does work. Again, the coat I used for the exterior was Duplicolor's Oxford White. And I really like the way it turned out. It has a little bit of a grayish hue to it, so it's not as bright as some of the whites can be. Uh, the one thing about working with Duplicolor, though, I will forewarn you, is that the nozzle is kind of peculiar. It comes out in a vertical spray. So you do have to kind of get used to using that. I just, uh, when I apply that, I just uh, apply it in waves, you know, just going back and forth, and try not to hold uh, one position too long. And the other colors I used were Guards Red for the red stripes that you see here, and that's made by Testers and also testers medium gray for the landing gear and then testers chrome for the posts. Another thing I'm very happy with was the way the Alclad paints turned out. Uh, they really simulate the look of metal. Uh, as you know there are um, kits that you can buy that include metal bells and other uh, metal pieces that are made of aluminum but uh, you know if you don't have the money to uh, you know to spend on a kit like that uh, all you need is a $8 bottle of Alclad and an airbrush, and uh, they will turn out this way. The uh, bells on the underside uh, turned out pretty nice as well. And uh, what I did, by the way, with the steering jets is that um, I decided not to use Alclad on these. Uh, the reason being is that when I use Alclad on the sensor dishes here, they turned out a little bit darker than I wanted them to. Uh, they still look good, but um, because these are small pieces, I decided just to go ahead and do a couple things. I use a Tamiya silver paint for the block and then I use Tester's chrome for the uh, bells and uh, I think they came out pretty well. Also very satisfied with the lighting. Um, as you recall we're just lighting the cockpit with just one three millimeter LED and uh, I tinted it a yellowish color. Um, it doesn't look quite as lemony yellow as you see here in the video. I'm not sure why it's turning out that way but um, uh, it, it does light the cockpit pretty effectively there and as you know the uh, wire feeds through this uh, front portion here and into the passenger pod. Okay so I've turned the model over just to show you how easy it is to get to the battery. Uh, as you know I use magnets for the flooring here and all you have to do is just apply just a little pull here and you can see the uh, floor just comes right out. And uh, the battery is located again in this uh, compartment, so I've left plenty of wiring, so there's a lot of move, room to move around here. You just remove the battery and put in a new one. And one thing I want to point out here is I use these batteries here that have these little holes in, and it just so happened I already had purchased these from a while back. And at first I didn't think they'd be strong enough, but actually they're a, a very good strength for what you need here. Uh, I, I uh, know that there are other ones that could be stronger than this, but uh, this is just the right strength to uh, hold the flooring in place, and yet it's not too hard to pull apart. Now some modelers have put the switch and battery in this section here, which is perfectly fine. That will allow you to uh, make the passenger pod removable. Uh, but um, you know, if you're going to do it this way, obviously uh, it's going to be wired through, so you just have to know that you, you can't do that, which I was actually fine with. Um, you know, it's pretty tight here anyway, so I'm not sure how easily that can be removed, but, um, but I, I thought this solution worked really well. The other thing I did was I left the pods unglued, actually, so that way if I ever decide to transport the model to a model show or something, um, they're easily removable, and that way you lessen the chance of damage. 
All right, one other thing I wanted to show you here is uh, something that you can get from a gentleman named Mike Reeder, and these are metallic sensor dishes that replace the plastic ones that come with the model kit. These came a little late for this particular model here, uh, but uh, I was a little concerned that maybe the metal wouldn't quite go with the Alclad uh, effect there, but uh, you can see they're, they're pretty close. So uh, I might use this on the uh, other Eel kit that I have. As you know, I have another one there that I showed you at the very beginning of this. And, uh, but uh, this runs about, I believe, about 16 bucks for this, including shipping. So again, you can check on that Facebook page if you're interested in these. Okay, guys, well, that pretty much does it for this build here. I hope you had fun following along. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always contact me at innersherlamodeler at gmail.com or leave a comment here on this YouTube channel. So another build will be coming down the line sometime soon, and not sure what that'll be, but uh, I'll certainly be posting a video about it. All right, so until then, take care.